Hi, I'm Ashley from Beecroft and Bull, and we're just demonstrating some proper uh, models of suits and ways to go about fitting suits and what to look for uh, when measuring your suit and uh, what you should look for as a consumer um, when purchasing a, purchasing a suit. So um, we have a suit uh, here today. We're just going to demonstrate on a mannequin, and it's a uh, suit by Raphael Caruso, Italian-made suit. Uh, it's got a soft-shouldered garment. There's uh, Rope shoulders, more Italian style suits, and uh, there's more natural shoulders. Uh, a lot of people like the natural shoulder, just a little more comfortable, but it doesn't have the discrepancies quite so well as a uh, padded shoulder. This is a peak lapel versus a notch lapel uh, that I'm wearing, and uh, we have a flat front trouser versus a pleated trouser. Um, it's a side bend garment um, versus a center vent down the middle seam here or a no vent where this this area would be closed. There's different uh, vents for different body types. Um, a lot of people say that it should be non-vented or side vented just because when a person puts its, his hands into his pocket here the suit tends to drape nicely. But a lot of traditional dressers tend to like it with a center vent also. It just depends if they have a prominent seat or no seat and uh, how the suit is fit and that will determine how it lies um, on the seat area. Um, that being said, you have to kind of take that into consideration for pleated trousers or, or flat front. Those that have a bigger seat area tend to like a pleated trouser because when you sit down your hips expand and it gives you a little more room with a pleated trouser. Um, I guess ideally a pleated trouser gives you a more up and down appearance uh, when you're walking also so it's a longer silhouette. Uh, the flat front is kind of where the trousers are going right now versus the pleat um, just because of it's more fitted, fitted looking and uh, sh suits are coming up in length a little bit, breaks on trousers are coming up a little bit, not quite the, the long heavy break that uh, it was a couple years ago. So um, also with your buttons, um, as far as positioning, the old style suits tend to have a lower position on the button stance and it's bumped up a little bit as you can see here, so that shortens your focal point in the suit. Um, so it almost fits like the middle button of a third button, the two buttons today. That can be changed with a custom suit and any of your model options as far as shoulder, buttons, linings, uh, trouser options, flat front versus pleat um, can all be changed as well. I guess you want to look at um, your fabric selection and, and what your uh, purpose of the suit is going to be. Uh, if you're going to be traveling a lot, you want a fabric that's going to be a very durable, maybe a harder finish fabric um, that resists staining and, and shine on the, on the wool. Um, you may want to consider if it's going to be in the uh, summertime versus the fall, the weight of the fabric, or where you're going to be wearing the suit. So that takes into some consideration with fabric selection. If you uh, ever find time to come by, we have lots of fabrics you can dive into. Uh, from, from lots of different vendors and they all offer uh, distinct advantages to, uh, to eat from each company. So we're going to demonstrate kind of a fitting. Fittings don't take too, too long, they're uh, pretty painless. And what we do here is a made to measure garment where we measure a person's uh, dimensions, their chest and overarm, waist, seat, look at their body type, what kind of suit would, would fit them best. Uh, guys that have a sloping shoulder or a high hip or a prominent seat. Uh, or guys that may have one leg shorter than the other. Uh, broad chest, you know, you have to take that all into consideration when making the suit just so the person's comfortable and it looks good. So um, what we're going to do first, I guess, is just kind of demonstrate a overarm measurement that goes around 
the arm and the chest area of the suit and, and that'll just tell you your overarm measurement with the uh, tape fitted pretty loosely, not, not tight, but just to where it's comfortable. That's one of the first measurements you take. Second would probably be the chest measurement. It gives you an idea of uh, the armhole of the suit and how uh, big their chest is. When fitting a suit, you generally tend to fit the shoulder and chest first and the waist uh, later because this, this area has to kind of fit um, for a stock size single suit off of the rack, probably the, f the first part uh, needs to be there. The waist would be next. If a, if a guy is slimmer than the shoulder, you know, this area would be brought in in the waist. And so uh, we'd go ahead and measure the stomach area. So that would be around here. And that tells you almost, you know, what the drop of the suit's going to be here. You're getting a pretty good indication of how much it's going to have to be brought in through the body, and uh, that's called your drop. A guy that's a 40 uh, inch chest will come down to a 33 waist. That would be a drop of seven. So that's um, main, mainly what the the British and, and Italian suit makers uh, stock is a, is a drop seven garment. It's a little more fitted. The American suit is a drop six typically and uh, so a 40 would come with a 34 waisted trouser. It gives you a little more room in the body, um, a little fuller armhole generally. British and Italian suits tend to have a real high armhole which uh, tends to bind a lot of guys and then off the rack the first uh, reaction is it really doesn't feel comfortable. Get a lot of guys, you know, checking it out that way and lifting up and seeing what really feels good on them. So there's an alteration that, that can take place under the armhole called easing the armhole and uh, that would kind of alleviate some of those tight, tight feelings that you get in your arm. The measurement next would probably be the seat. You kind of come down the body, measure around the person's seat and that'll indicate, you know, whether you know, they need to be brought in or let out um, at the factory when you give those measurements. They give you a diagram of a person's body type and you kind of have a little sketch that you put on there and indicate those different things. And then you kind of look at the shoulder. Some, most people typically have a drop shoulder. Um, they'll, have, they'll be uh, right-handed and let's say their right arm drops a little bit. Um, so that will kind of show in the armhole sometimes. You'll get a breakthrough here. Um, and also you get a lot of people that have dislocated shoulders um, so that that will cause the sleeve measurement to show a little differently off the rack so we kind of have to take that into consideration when fitting. When you look at a, a gentleman's suit it should look pretty symmetrical in the shoulder and a lot of times when uh, you don't have much padding in there um, it really really shows up and uh, and you can see those discrepancies. So sometimes we have to, you know, put padding in there to make the person look symmetrical, um, or also keep their button stance equal here. Sometimes you'll have a guy with a drop right shoulder; his button will hang lower. So when he buttons it, you get a big pull in the jacket. So those are just some small things to consider when fitting your suit. Right now, I'd say on trouser length of the suit. Uh, we call it almost the Mid-Atlantic Solution, according to Luciana Barbera. And uh, the Europeans are wearing their trouser length quite short. They're showing just a little bit of sock even, uh, so that they show off more of their shoe. And the Americans are still wearing a longer trouser length, sometimes with a double break. And so the Mid-Atlantic Solution would be a medium break and just showing just a little bit of uh, barely a little bit of sock and, and, and just more of their shoe right now. So that's kind of the gist of it. Um, if you, anyone ever wants to come in and kind of get a demonstration or get their sizes, they're more than welcome to stop by and dive into some of the fabrics as well. I hope that helps.